So, today we're going to be working on a machine that uh, has intermittent graphics. So sometimes you get the graphics, and at other times you don't get any graphics. And this is an older MacBook. This is a 2010 17-inch MacBook Pro. Now, a lot of people like these 2010 MacBook Pros because they have the 17-inch screen. Apple stopped giving you a 17-inch screen in 2011, and the 2011 model, as I've said many times, has those rampant GPU failures, so they're, they're, they're completely useless. So if you want a 17-inch Mac, you have the 2010, and the 2009 is an option. So let's just ex show what this thing's doing if we turn it on. So this is MacBook, and it's giving a screen. But if you tap it... It stops giving oh. you a screen. See? Oh. Now it's a black screen. So every now and then you get a screen and sometimes you don't get a screen. Now what I see is very common with these machines is that people will try to reflow the graphics chip when they have this issue. But what you have to remember is that this machine has two graphics cards. It has the Intel built-in graphics chip into the i5 of the i7 processor and also the GPU. So if you get no video at all, and it's random like that, it isn't necessarily your graphics card that's bad. So I'm going to switch over to the schematic here and go over a theory with you while also uh, showing you what you should check on these older boards and even on some of the new ones, actually, because I do believe they still use muxing circuits, which is something called the LVDS mux. And on new machines, it's called the EDP or DisplayPort mux. On here, this is U9600. So if we look at this document, you'll see that we have two different graphics cards. We have the graphics card that's built into the CPU, which is you know which speaks with the PCH, and then we have the NVIDIA graphics up here. So the NVIDIA graphics will speak to something called the MUX, and then the Intel graphics also speaks to the MUX before it goes to the LCD connector. So in order for you to get a switch in graphics, it has to go through this chip before it gets to the LCD connector. It's not like the Intel internal graphics and the NVIDIA internal graphics both connect directly to the LCD connector. That wouldn't make any sense. That wouldn't work. So you have a chip that sits in between it. So let's see what happens when you tap that chip on the board. So right now we have screen. Oh, now it's going to stay on. Yeah, go figure. There, you, there go. you go. There you go. So when you tap it, that's what happens. Now, this is a very, very, uh, it's a compact chip, and it typically sits right underneath the PCH, which is a very well heat-synced area, so it's a bit difficult to reflow. But what you c this is not a flip chip design. It's very similar to an SMC, so you can actually fix this often with a reflow. But if you reflow the GPU, it will not fix this problem. It'll just add to the um, destruction of the, of the GPU, because you're putting it through a thermal cycle it doesn't need and the mux will still be a problematic. So let's see what happens if you reflow the mux on this board and if it fixes the problem. And I'm confident that since Paul's soldering is 10 times better than mine, it's still go just fine. <laughs> now one thing that you have to be careful about with this is you have to make sure that you get rid of all the edge bonding because if there's any edge bonding under there, it's gonna combine with the balls. Now the SMC uses 0.3 to 0.35 millimeter balls. This chip uses 0.2 to 0.25 millimeter balls that are very close together. So with the SMC, you can get away with having a little bit of edge bonding in there. But with this, if you have any edge bonding that gets under the chip, you're never, ever, ever going to get that fixed without reballing the chip. And with that, I will leave you to our uh, main man, Paul. And I left a bunch of edge bonding under it. Wait, is that Do they actually have squares around the chip? Yes, they oh showed you God. where it belongs. That's insane. That ed edge bonding did not come out cleanly, so I'm going to have to grab an exacto knife and get it out from underneath it. Maybe I can get this side to come out cleanly. There's a very fine line between not enough heat and too much heat for this edge bonding. Some of them come off with no problem, others rip to shreds. Now I'm wondering if it even went underneath the chip because that one came off the same way. We'll have to tilt it up and see if it's still underneath the chip. Where's my chip? There's my chip. Okay, we got a little piece down there. Let's just clean that out a little bit. Yeah. 
Yeah, it all came out. Let's do the other corners. Hi, 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 hi. More heat. Two thousand RJ forty five cables today. Mm, I used to work for Lucent Technologies, and I sat there terminating BNC connectors for an entire week one time at a central office. Ooh, that, this isn't my microscope. This is Lewis's bench that I'm on. My bench is occupied by a obnoxious data recovery for the entire damn day. Okay, now let's reflow this thing. So I have my temperature at max, my air at max, and the biggest nozzle on the quick that we have. I've been told that this is going to take a lot of heat to get this thing to move. And that is dancing. Dance, little chip, dance. Oh, that's all mucked up now. Find a Q-tip. Give this an SMC rapid cool, even though it's a mux. Okay, so how was reflow? Reflow was easy. Huh. It was it was uh, as expected. Look at all that stuff on the board that tells the machine where. What the fuck. Wait till that's done. Come. Yeah. No, I want to put some. The quick made quick work of it. Beautiful. Okay, let's see if it works. Is it cool? It is cool. Now to see if it works. Plug in battery. Let's you want to switch to overhead camera? Yep. Scary moment. See if you had a stream deck, I would know which button to push. <laughs> it's obviously F7. Obviously. I'm going to put a label on that camera, F7. You could probably make a, or make a stream deck out of like a numpad or something. Time, light. All right, now if we tap the board, do we still have the intermittency from before? Macintosh HD. Tap. <laughs> I'm afraid. <laughs> oh, no. Tap. Point tap, two millimeter tap, balls. Tap, tap. And like moving the case around tap, a little. Tap, 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 tap. Flex, flex, flex. Ooh, look at how much flex this MacBook has. God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Unibody, baby. Tap, tap, tap. Aluminum is poke. better than plastic, don't you know? Poke, poke, poke. Ooh, it's getting warm, poke. 
Yeah, it gets warm. It's a Mac. There you go. LCD LVDS Mux. How much should we charge him for that? Not enough. So please, please stop reflowing the GPUs. Please. Reflowing a GPU is not a fix. Reflowing a little Mux may be a fix. Is that your first Mux? That's my first 2010 Mux. Huh. It's all muxed up now. It usually takes at least five years for, that, for the balls under that to crack, so you're probably not going to get those repairs besides older models. But they do use that same MUX uh, idea on everything up to the newest one. And on the newest one, I think the MUX is between the CPU and the GPU. Oh, well, that's it for today. So we managed to fix a Bafang motor today and the 2010 MacBook. So as always, I hope you learned something. Now we're going to go back to listening to Taylor Swift. Yay!